like going hunting Just me, my hound, and my gun Chasing them deer, rabbit, and squirrel Now that's my kind of fun I like going fishing too I'll go on any whim Looking for the big bass The crappie and the brim Just give me a wide open field To walk through Give me an ocean so deep I want to ride the longest river in the world Or maybe climb the highest mountain peak Like going down to the fishing hole My buddies and me and my old cane pole Bake them hooks and wet them lines It's life I love so fine It's almost supper time You'd think the world was mine And now here's Archie Phillips And co-host Denise Forbes Hey, Mr. Archie, you know I'm from the deep south Louisiana, and I know how much you love crawfish. Well, today we're out here bright and early with the crawfish kings, Mr. Jeffrey Danino and Mr. Anthony. And uh, we're going to show you. You always got so many questions, how you get the crawfish, where they come from. Well, today you're going to find the answers to all your questions. So Mr. Jeffrey, just want to find out how what the what the cage looks like, what the trap looks like, and how they go in, how they come out. Just give us a summary of what's going on. Well, well, well uh, Jeff, let me ask you this now. <laughs> I thought I'd been in the swamp. <laughs> Where are we at? <laughs> we are in the Atchafalaya Basin. Uh, it's over 160,000 acres of flooded swamp. Uh, it's been here. I've been doing this for about. 25 years since I was a kid. Uh, Daddy's always brought me out here. Um, this is south around Pierport. It runs all the way to Bayou Pigeon, goes all the way up to Marksville, and it, it's a natural flow to where the water can come to where it kind of raises the water level and keeps the pressure off the levees, what they call a spillway. They allow water here whenever they need it if the, too much water's on the levees. So this is kind of like a natural habitat for any kind of animal you basically can shake a stick at. Well, I mean, now this is where you said they film a lot of the swamp people's this shows. This is where it all happens. Uh, about 75% of it's in here. You go a little further north towards Bayou Pigeon. Uh, anything and everything can grow out here. Um, whatever you see on TV, it probably came from here. Alligators, snakes, turtles, deer, hogs, ducks, <laughs> everything. You name it, they got it. Two traps left. Could you just go for miles in here? Miles. If you did that, you'd have to have a GPS, wouldn't you? I know my way a good bit. But if you just decide to go on an explorer trail, oh, you better have a GPS. If what not, you better bring a tent. You'll be sleeping in the boat. Is that right? Watch your head. Watch your head. Just put that in there the night before lunch. I was hoping I'd see him at his. Look how pretty it is up here, Mr. Orchard. 
Yeah, look, he got him right there, look. That's what he's running right here. Look, Big Jeff right here. How many you got, Jeff? What? They stopped biting up there. How many y'all got? Oh, that ball of mine. Oh, 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 Never that was a big one. Crap. Wow, look at the crawfish in there. Look my bit of slacking too, you see here with <laughs> I, I was talking. <laughs> I'm gonna show you some real trap. Pull that sack up there, man. <laughs> oh yeah, boy. Come on, mama. What what an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> in the swamps of Louisiana. I've always wanted to get out here in these swamps and see what they were really like. And we really got in the swamp today. Yes. I mean, with the boys that knew what they was doing, I'm gonna tell you one thing. These boys know their business. This is where we pay uh, stuff Look at that, that's a good, good pool. I like that. <laughs> hey, uh, Jeff, is that what you the old? Red wall spray in here? Yeah. Yeah, that's it's why I keep that wall spray in the boat. Well, I was fixing to say, it looks to me like it'd be good territory for them things. Oh, yeah. They love it. I was pulling some cypress off that we were hitched, but I pulled the side of this cypress off. Boy, they like to pull me up. I'm talking about bad. You see if you didn't have this chicken tray? Oh, and you yeah, just yeah. dumped that right in this bucket or in a sack. Huh? You have all that trash. Oh, you. yeah. You see? Doing this. These crawfish are clean when they get them. Move that other loop. This is a new set right here. I just moved this right here. I want to try it. it Look like a good spot. Some little three foot traps, three foot nest traps. Uh -huh. Look at that. Wow, look at that. Look at all those. Wow. That's why I moved them here. Look at that. Very good. good. Big old black and one. A piece of bait left. Look at that. It didn't take long to get these bags filled. Did it? In the back, in the back, they, they run in the back, like that. Look, I'm a... Jeff, I can understand why you gotta have a strong boat in it. You've been banging around here, hitting these trees. My goodness, I don't see that this boat take, takes all that. What size motor you got back there? I got a 90. 90 horse motor. You running through this swamp, hitting these trees and banging off. I don't see how in the world this boat takes this kind of funny. <laughs> Charles Leonard built this boat. He's a famous builder. He's been building boats for probably 40 years. Is he right down here? Yep. We'll probably go ride shop after and see how they put them together and the art of it and how they come up with their design. Well, boy, they tough. That's all I got to say. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it on my left. Oh, yeah, right there. And. Oh, no, a little bit higher. Up, up. To your left, to your left, right there. Oh, I felt him bite me. <laughs> them red ants are real bad. Are oh, they? Oh, they get on them, they eat them cypress stumps and all. They can't go nowhere. When they bite you, oh. They say it makes some good Look at the honey. size of that tree right there. Look. I know, is that humongous or what? I filmed it earlier. Look at that hole. See, if we huh? get enough fly, we get enough cypress out of that to put 500 fish on. I'm telling you. Look at all the holes in it. Wood, big old woodpecker well, hole. You know how you don't see those red woodpeckers no more? Uh huh. Well, out here, they're about that big. High-lated woodpeckers. You know mm -hmm. the redhead ones? The big red ones. 
Yeah. They about that big. Not the ivy bill, the pileated. Yeah. Yeah. They about that big. Oh yeah. They are huge. Well, they got they got plenty of wood to get in, had not they? <laughs> Boy, that's a cypress tree there. I'm telling you. Goodness gracious, a lot. Look at that old deer here, right there. I don't see how in the world they got. I don't see how they got them cypress trees out of here, though. They got them out. Do with the high water, they slow them out. I guess I don't know. Back was right here, man. Jeff, how much, uh, how much uh, bait cost do you think you got every day when you have to come out here? I got here? about a $100 expense before you get out here. Yep. Oh, Jeff, guess what? Why? I'm out of paper. Got a shad. Oh. I got some under me. No, I got shad. I need fold. We got fold. We got a whole box. I always bring extra. I'm gonna move this trap. You don't like it? No. Not catching a whole lot right here. That's a driftwood. Sure is. Yeah, that is Get pretty. Get that, Denise. That is pretty. <laughs> oh, I knew he'd drop it in you. <laughs> pretty. We're putting a lot of fish on that driftwood they got out here. I know. You run this trap and need to sack up. Now, will you not use this same trail next year? Never know. I mean, if they got crawfish here, yeah. If they don't, I ain't coming back. But I'm gonna leave my traps probably. Put them in the, uh, just hang them. What I do is I'll come back, the water will be low, I'll take those traps, and I'll just hang them like that and leave them upside down. Okay, out here in the, the swamp. Yep. And nobody mess with them. Uh, probably not, but you might get a few that's missing. But I mean, look, you want to bring home a hundred traps? Yeah, that's... That's, that's a job. Yeah. Whoa. Right here with Whoa, look at that. Okay, we got plenty of people. Put some in there. You got uh, seven bags full now. Yes, sir. And you got some more traps to run? Yeah, I got about 20 more. 20 more. And after that, we'll go back there and check out Daddy, see what they're doing. I see. Is he very far from here? No, he's about five minutes. Five minutes away? Yep. I see. Well, I'll start our second row. I see. Okay. And then get that going. Now, is this the area your daddy always works to? Yeah, kind of. We kind of stay towards the front right here because they got fresh water. Uh -huh. When you got fresh water, you got good current. You got oxygen in the water. When you go to the back, no oxygen means dead crawfish. Uh -huh. And you can't sell dead crawfish. I got you. So, you got to kind of kind of pick your, pick your poison, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. It's the most fantastic thing I've ever seen. <laughs> now, I've been eating them all these years. I just, it's always bothered me. I wonder how in the world them people catch all them crawfish. I couldn't figure it out. He said on the way up here, they must have billions of them. Oh, if you could drain this place, you wouldn't know telling what you'd find. <laughs> the animals, the, the crawfish. Well, now, y'all got nutrients in here? Oh, yeah. nutrients. Eight dollars a tail. They're destroying everything. Are they? Are they knocking the den in them? I don't know. They did down the river. I just stepped on this crawfish, and I and look, for 160 pounds, I ain't even broke a shell. They get That's more. Well, in other words, from this point on, they're gonna be getting hard. It just depends. It depends if a new crop comes out or not. Uh huh. Well, what do you figure? What do you figure it takes them length of time to get that big? I really don't know. Never really studied the science on it. I'm sure.
So LSU can tell you, um, if crawfish got fresh water and oxygen, they can grow. I'd say about 40 days, 30 days. If they got the nutrients, they can grow. They start off the size of like a little, like a little maggot or something, and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then as they get bigger and bigger, once they get in the trap, they're big enough to catch. It just depends. I'd never find all these traps. <laughs> I'd be making traps every time I went on. I'd be, I'd lose about half of them the first day. <laughs> this trap was wide open like this. Well, usually that's an otter. An otter goes in there with his hands and he'll open it up. He won't mess with this end because he thinks it's like a booby trap because it, it don't look right to him. But this one was folded all neat. He went in there just like a human. He just opened it up and he went in there after that fish. He dove in there. It could have been a live fish, a piece of bait, anything. And he went after it and he went to get his supper and it was for free. He didn't have to work hard for it. <laughs> he got one on us. And there he sat and ate right yep. there. Got to survive some kind of way. Now, what I, what I would do next time was, I know he's gonna come back because he knows it's a dinner bell. <laughs> I would take a clothespin and put a clothespin on there. When he saw that clothespin, out of the real smart. They know something's not right. <laughs> they don't want to mess with it. Yeah. So I take a clothespin, I'll put a clothespin on there. When he's gonna see that, he's gonna know something, something's wrong, something's not right. He's not gonna mess with it. I got you. Yep, sat right there and ate them crawfish. See that log right there? You wouldn't be able to go over that log without a kill. That keel make, makes it pass under it. That keel's just gonna push it down. That's a pretty low. Now I move this trap. They're gonna be this trap will be loaded, I can tell. Wow. Get back over here. I'll keep playing. Boy, that's a bull up. Did you see these fish, Mr. Archie? I mean, ain't nothing but skeleton left. Yeah. They hammering on. Yes, sir. Fifteen sacks, and we got ten. That's twenty-five bags of. That's a lot of crawfish. Yep. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. And they just, some pretty crawfish. You, you see how efficient they were about getting them, though. Very efficient. I mean, they just. They have a system. Oh goodness gracious! Fox, I know you probably caught crawfish one at a time, hadn't you? Yes, sir. In a pond or something. In the ditch. Yeah. In the ditch, yes, sir. In the ditch, but you caught you caught a whole. Sp bunches of them today they won't to talk to you a minute but that was an adventure an adventure how long a journey how long you been doing that since i was 15 and i'm 40. 15 and 40. <laughs> He's older i'm 47. 57. do the math i see i see well that was that was something else now i've i've been eating them things for years and i love them i didn't know how you, you know caught how to them? Catch them didn't know nothing about it, but it was it was really great. One day I'm gonna show you how to catch bass too, yeah. Well, I need somebody to show me how. <laughs> Folks, it's been a been a great day, and Jeff, I wanna I wanna appreciate you for setting this thing up. You and Ed back here. You know, we, <laughs> I didn't do nothing with his ass. Let me tell you what, we ate these crawfish last week, 
And Ed said, I know the guy that catches them things. I said, well, call him. Let's see if we can do a show of catching them. And I appreciate Jeff Jr. and Anthony here helping us out there. And Denise, we, we had never took an adventure like this that ever. That was something. I and Jeff, was, I mean, was that pretty good for you, Fox? Yes, sir. Fox caught him one at a time. He ain't never caught a million at a time, has he? <laughs> and that was a great time. And we wanted, really want to thank y'all for an adventure. I, I, I really was impressed with y'all swamp down here. I, I thought I'd been in a swamp, but I, I'm telling you now. And that boat, Jeff, that boat of yours, I wouldn't have, I'd have bet you a nickel you couldn't have gone in all that mess with that thing, but it just went right through there. We really want to thank you for helping us out, Anthony, you too, back there. Yeah, I, saw so, Scott. I, saw Scott. I saw that go devil, that uh, again a tail go through that? He sure did. We saw that fancy boat and all that stuff, so uh, it's amazing that there's that many crawfish in this swamp. I just couldn't believe it. I knew I'd see people eating them everywhere. I said, I wonder where all them crawfish come from. And so we found out today, didn't we? Yes, Denise? sir. Now we know. Now we know. All we right, know. tell them about what to do next week. Y'all stay tuned for more Outdoors with Mr. Martin Williams.